and so these are all things that you could be nervous to talk about. Now, I do want to draw attention, however, to a couple of other things. First of all, there's this part. So this part, which is arguably transitioning into the negative there. So this part here is your opportunity to land something positive, right? For example, I am obsessed with making sure, okay, I'm obsessed with making sure that we can be simple whilst also being clear, simple and effective, simple and resonant. And that means that I'm going to have to go through cycles, right? And smaller, smaller um, engagements, maybe it's just me providing some coaching or our story accelerator program. In other cases, it might be our whole team, but that we're obsessed with helping you cut through this noise. And that's a positive commitment to make to your audience, right? But let me tell you something, X, Y, Z challenges, right? By the way, the word but is very powerful in this context. We'll often, we'll often hear people talk about these two words, right? And people will say, the word and is good. The word but is bad. When we say but, it negates everything that came before it. And so if we're having a conversation with somebody, we should say, um, um, I love you, honey, but you just are not tidying up this thing and it's driving me crazy, right? The but in that case, the risk run is that it negates the I love you comment, right? And uh, it, we hear this, right? It's especially when you think about work communications. Um, which maybe I should have started on. Having ADHD and dyslexia does mean I tend to leave the ADHD. Um, I think they both actually have an interplay on the messes that I tend to leave, and I have to make an extra special effort to be tidy. So uh, speaking from experience there, but if we think about work and uh, we say, hey, you know, Kelly, your project was amazing. Like the way you planned it out, the way you rallied the stakeholders, but if only the results had given us what we wanted to see. What have we done there, right? We've said, we've used this word, but, and we've told them, and we've been told that that word eliminates everything that came before. We could debate that, but it's it makes a lot of sense, right? And so how do we navigate that? We say, and, so, great, did such a great job. And I think, or, and if we look at the results, there's obviously some opportunities for us to improve it the next time. Great, fantastic, okay. Uh, more power to you using and in that, in that context. But the word but is also a very powerful tool when it comes to getting people to lean in. And in this case, we want to, we're obsessed with this, your priority, go full bore on talking about this. And then we talk about the, the challenges, right? So, but we agonize, we need to get close to you, but not too close. Talk about all, about all that stuff that's down here in this, in this area here. And then we also have the opportunity, hey, I'm gonna use the word but again, in, in fact, but that's not the end of it, right? We also have this opportunity here. There's a lot more green here than there is yellow, right? It is tempting to think that we only want to stay in this zone here. Yeah, it's not so great, but it's not super bad. The problem is, is 
what this graph represents is it represents that contrast and that contrast is what gets us to lean in it's why people rub a neck on the side of a freeway when there's an accident crash because they're curious what happened this terrible thing right and that's what this serves a purpose of so as you're thinking about the stories you tell i really want you to make sure that you're not just focusing on the positive that you're also thinking through how you can create that contrast and create that texture and be honest and authentic in the communications that you have and when you do that you're going to get people to care you're going to get people drawn in and one way that you can you can approach this is let me pull up something here it's being really methodical about making sure that you have your positives your negatives lined up and we created a tool to help with this so this is our storytelling fraction playbook see it here so this playbook is the is packed full of the, the frameworks that we actually use in our in our in our project so when we're running a trips storytelling workshop we're using the trips methodology and that trips storytelling workshop feeds into the into the narrative work that we do in our more comprehensive projects is so this playbook actually has all most of our frameworks in it and th if you're there's something I, I, I'd, I'd love to share with you in regards to the business story types and we can talk about that as well they're not in here but but what is in here we've got the three the power of 3d story which is a framework that you can use to rapidly gather what you need to tell a story and it's going to be connected into exactly what I just shared with you a second ago and the meat this is about bringing that heart into your stories the morals essential emotions and truth and then here we've got the trips methodology which I mentioned and what this talks about is it talks about the world right the transformation that's happening that's happened to your customers the challenges the the heart the head and the heart of the reasons to believe the facts and the figures but also the aspirations of how you help what problems stand in the way and the stories that you can tell about that so if we shoot down to this the 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 first part of the 3d framework you can start to get a sense for how comprehensive this is we go through the each of these plays has got these moves and these are designed to get your juices flowing when it comes to your business and the things you need to be thinking about very obvious first one here nice and easy to get going is this goal what is their goal what is driving their their need to do something right this we talked about the character the person that is in your audience that you're trying to get to do something and each one of these has these six moves in and high level on this page to help you just trigger those ideas and some folks look at this and that's it that's all they need to get going and we've just we found that in our workshops others need a little bit more pushing right a little bit more for, um help thinking things through i think about the times when i'm like learning something new and want to remember all of the specifics and all the steps and just rote learning has never worked for me I, it has to be meaningful right and so we bring that meaning in here where we actually have within the moves we have these actual recommendations these ideas and some of them can be a proxy for something you're doing and get you to think about it some of them can inspire you to think through what you're trying to do and 
zero in on something in particular. And others might just be a perfect fit, right? You might have um, a product that is very much about the environment, right? And you look at this and you see improving the environmental world and you go ahead and you you grab that and you you can run with it. And so the, those are all different scenarios in terms of how you could use this. And it might be that you look at one of these and you say, you know what? So do they have a sense of purpose to calling a mission? Okay, we'll think about that. Is there an explicit pain or issue? Yes, there is. And it's whatever. Um, is there a promised land they seek? Uh, somewhere they want to be in five, 10 years. And you might think to yourself, you know what? That's not really relevant for how we're thinking things through. We're getting enough from these other things not to need this, this other stuff down there. So these are not intended to be a, you have to follow every single step. These are move through these moves to consider all of the possible potential inputs that you and outcomes that you want. And once you've done that, you have this collection of things that you can work on. Now, the uh, we still have uh, not released the Kindle book because uh, we had some interesting issues with this part, which is in the print book, it wasn't meant to be in the Kindle book. And I accidentally uploaded this version rather than the other version. And uh, and then, yeah, so long story short, I screwed up and it created a disconnect with Kindle. And once Kindle have rejected a book, you can't actually undo that, it seems, which is really interesting and bizarre, if you ask me. But um, the paper book includes this and uh, the the Kindle book, which we'll be releasing soon, has the promise of providing this if you email us and, uh, and so we can send you an editable PDF that you can use for this. So this is a gr is, is your workspace, right? So you've, you've, had the, you've had the prompts on this one, you can sit down and you can work through all these things. So I, I've just been talking about this desire, right? But the other thing that we've talked about is difficulty, right? And this is where we were talking about that, that trough of, of negativity. And so when you when you look at those potential negative things, this is what this part of the 3D framework is designed to inspire. Now, are there immediate are there uh, are there immediate blockers? Are there um, is there a promise as they start to go along the road? Are there roadblocks? Is there a specific villain, which could be not just an individual, but it could be a person, an entity? And that use of villain, by the way, is intentionally as a sort of character or an entity. Sometimes you'll hear people talk about with business storytelling that a villain can be um, a process or an um, or expectation or a law. And those are all absolutely valid. But we, we've structured this is like internal blockers external factors and roadblocks and so on. So when we say specific villain, we're, we're giving you the opportunity to think explicitly about what that could be. And if we then look at what the, the next click down on the villain one, for example, is, uh, dun, 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 dun. here are some examples, right? So financial signatory authority, internal politics, and politicians, right? It could be any of these pot potential entities. And as you work through these on your own, you may well come up with all sorts of other interesting and creative ideas. But the key is, do think about what stands in the way of getting what you want. And when you're telling your story, to be authentic, you need to be able to reveal some of the challenges that you have overcome. And if you want to create that engagement, you want to get people to lean in, you're going to need that. And quite frankly, if you think about putting, if you put yourself in your audience's shoes, say, let's say employee, right? If you put yourself in your employee's shoes because you are seeking to build and improve the culture, so that you can have more effective um, product development, 
right? So that's your, those are your goals. And obviously there's some challenges that come with that. Within that, you're going to want to talk about what's not working right now, right? What are people maybe doing wrong? Why is there, why are there problems with the culture? And of course, some of that's gonna be your responsibility. Some of it might fall on the shoulders of your employees, right? Culture is nothing without employees contributing. We're talking about company here, right? Culture is nothing without citizens contributing as well. So something's gonna rest on their shoulders. And if something's gonna rest on their shoulders, you run the risk of actually getting them to put their shields up, right? They feel attacked, right? Put the shields up, we're being attacked. And if that happens, are you going to get them to open their minds and their hearts and commit to this action that you want them to take? No, right? So you need to figure out ways to minimize that. And some of that is going to be how you tell the story, how you land the, the communications, what you what words you use, how much of an aspirational future you paint, for example, how specific you are, how helpful you are. These are all aspects to it, of course. But there's something that you can do as a leader that is going to accelerate all of that. And that is your own authentic storytelling and being able to admit to what you have done wrong, either in that context or in a different context, right? And as long as the context is relevant, you could tell a story about something that happened many years ago, right? It could be a previous company you're at or a personal story or a story way back from your childhood. And in that, share this vulnerability and admission of imperfection. And that brings us all the way full circle to what probably nobody heard because apparently the speakers weren't, microphone wasn't working. And that is the difference between a snake oil salesman and somebody that you really believe in. The snake oil salesman is going to get you to feel like you're doing something wrong and that there's a magical solution to it. But a great salesperson is going to create an environment of trust and safety. And you can do that by sharing the challenges you've had. You may have heard of oversharing. Of course you have, right? And the fact that just because somebody tells you something, you don't have to tell them. It could be a friend, could be a colleague. And the reason why that exists, the reason why we even think about this and this is, we've heard this advice is we feel compelled, right? There's a trade of information, right? When somebody opens themselves up to us, when somebody shows us they have no weapons, and disarms himself in front of us, we feel compelled to do the same. And these are aspects of human nature that prop up so much of what storytelling is, because storytelling is a part of our nature. And therefore, if you can take that idea and inject it into your, your, your communication, you're going to create that same desire to want to quid pro quo, right? Mm -hmm. For employees, that might be admitting that, you know what, we get it. We understand that if we did this more or this less, uh, things could, could be better from a cultural perspective. Right now, one of those things is that's kind of a big thing for a lot of companies is going back into the office, right? And we could take that whole scenario and go really deep on it, of course. But getting that quid pro quo uh, with a with a customer, it could be, this is a company I want to work with. They're authentic. They're honest. I trust them, right? And that needs to combine with sharing the positives. And it's in the positives that you can then establish that credibility, that proof of capability, that proof of capability, the demonstration of your your, your 
ability to deliver what it is that you're that you're promising. So I would encourage you to, in the coming week, think about how you can go ahead and start integrating some of the, the negative aspects of, of the stories that you want to tell and think about this shape, right? We've all heard about the the, the 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 advice on if you're if you've got a negative communication, use the sandwich method, right? Say something nice, deliver your feedback, say something nice, right? Email is a is a is a is a big one where this is super important for the all sorts of reasons and the context and challenges of email. You imagine getting the email from your uh, boss uh, and they say great job on hey kelly great job on the project love how you in involved everybody uh, we're seeing that the results are not quite what we were hoping for that you projected and so obviously we want to think about how we can change things moving forwards and love to hear your ideas about how to do that because you've already demonstrated such a strong ability to think these things through i know that you're going to be able to to solve this sandwiching right and here we've got sandwich a green yellow green in this case what's that lettuce cheese and lettuce <laughs> what kind of sandwich is this and so think of the sandwich when it comes to your storytelling right and in so doing you can you can start to draw people in with with that authenticity now you might be thinking to yourself "Ooh, okay well i can see how the 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 playbook could help with this and it is available up on amazon if you want to get a little taste of it, you can download the first play from our website, gonarrative.com. I type that in here. It's pretty easy. Gonarrative.com. And that uh, is uh, uh, trade your email, right? A good old fashioned lead magnet. We will send you some additional tips and all that good stuff. And of course, you can unsubscribe at any, any time. But we believe that there's so much value even just in that first play that it'll be worthwhile and that you'll then get even more value moving forward. So we believe it's a good trade. We believe that the, the quid pro quo there is, is really good. And of course, if you like those, those, that first chapter, this first, that first play and those first three or the first three plays and all the moves therein, you can go ahead and, and obviously get the book for like 26 bucks, uh, which is, which is a little bit, more affordable than if you wanted to hire us for our six week engagement um, for the story accelerator, which incidentally is back here. So our story accelerator is a way that we've packaged up our storytelling goodness to get it delivered in six weeks and to give you some really tangible outcomes to that. So we do coaching, right? We do some of the longer term, more involved pr projects with workshopping and really kind of digging into the, the challenges of the business and all of that good stuff, right? And the Story Accelerator kind of sits between those. It's a six week engagement. And you know, we, we, we start off by digging into the, your purpose, your why you're doing things, looking at how you're approaching them, what you're delivering, so that we can understand that, right? Earlier on, when the mic wasn't working, I was talking about threading the needle by getting as close as we can to your business, but also bringing this outside perspective. And, uh, and all of this actually starts with, again, available on the website, is discovering your business story type. And so you can actually discover this right now, gonarrative.com. Again, uh, in fact, no strings attached. You get this regardless, no gate in the way of getting your business story type. I would encourage you at the end of that when it's revealed to give us your email because then we give you seven days of tips on applying your story type, right? So how do I apply improving experiences? What does it mean? Help me next click this stuff. And this then becomes the beginning of uh, of that um, of that pro of that process of the story accelerator because we take that story type, which is the the story that it makes sense for you to be telling right now and apply that to your business. And so, for example, uh, the catalyst, go narrative the catalyst. We learn through our experiences how, how to do messaging, communication, storytelling, and we package that up 
in a way that um, we can help accelerate you because of these experiences that we've had. And for us, that's going to be pretty consistent, right? But actually, if you look at the, this year, we've been going through a challenge. We've been changing. We've launched this new product we've or offering. Um, we've got the book. And uh, I drove myself into the ground. I made myself ill back in May uh, with a, a chicken pox came and reared its ugly head again in the form of shingles. Uh, if you had chicken pox as a child and haven't had the vaccination for shingles, I would strongly encourage getting that. Uh, my goodness, seriously. Um, so I drove myself into the ground, bringing all this stuff to you guys. Uh, so actually, I I talk about that from a challenge perspective. And so the story you're telling now might vary from the story you're telling in a year's time. And uh, and there's a thing next week, I'll go into a bit more detail about these as we do have blogs on these. We're about to go live next month with the Growth Mindset blog, the final one. And But we can talk through what that process looks like. So Post any questions or comments you have below, and we can uh, we can we can cover them next week. But this outputs these three things. But the, the two big big ones are the the one on the center, which is actually a real client one, so that's why it's fuzzed out here. Uh, and then the uh, story accelerator, the tactical narrative for this offering. Um, you get your own tactical narrative, of course. The first one actually is what we'll if you do the if you do the 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 assessment and then book some time to talk about it, we'll actually create this first one for you and, and talk through that and how you can use that in your business. And as you can see, some of those elements carry on into the the second one there. But these are two firm deliverables that we work with you to come up with that foundation that you can use to bring consistency and alignment to all of the things you're saying and have the action of what you're trying to put at the center represented by what you're saying, right? So in other words, all the stories you tell ladder back up to this, all the content ladders back up to this, and you have a consistent focused push of what you're saying. And all you get all of that from this. So, and we, like, like I mentioned, we, we go really deep. We go through, you know, we have a kickoff. We dig into the purpose, into your how, why, and what, build the story guide and build the, the tactical narrative. And we go through this process, this cyclical process of, uh, of engaging with you and your, your, your key leadership team members to build this out. So, and it's a six week engagement that um, looks roughly like this. Cool. So anyway, this week we've covered quite a lot of ground and uh, it's all good. The main thing, of course, is the importance of including something below the um, the energy, um, the negative side of the line here. And by the way, the energy, you build the energy, you build the engagement as you go through this, right? As you go through this shape. And uh, it's a report back. Let me know how you get on. I'm excited to hear how you integrate some of these, these challenging uh, elements into how you're talking about your business. And I'm super excited to hear about uh, the impact of that, how that's different, how that's how that's better. And uh, and we'll meet back next week for, for more questions, more story ideas, and the latest in the world of using this amazing tool without having to learn how to be a, a master storyteller. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. And I shall see you soon. Cheers. Bye for now.